Netanyahu, also known as Shaitan Yahu, right? The devil. He's gone. Okay? He's gone. So after 12 years of being um, prime minister, he's out. Now, just a disclaimer before we continue with this video. Um, you know, for, for, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to say the Israeli government. But there, there is no Israeli government. This is, you know, it's an illegitimate state. I mean, the, the, you know, the Israeli so-called government is about as legitimate as the British when they were ruling India or, the, you know, the Germans occupying Poland or France, right? So that, that's about a, a, how, how legitimate they are, right? So they can call themselves a government and a state, but at the end of the day, they're colonizers, right? That doesn't change that they're colonizers. So they can call themselves whatever they like, but this does not change the reality on the ground. And, you know, this is why they try so desperately to be recognized as a state. But anyway, moving forward, right? So in the, in the Israeli occupation, they now have a new leader. Netanyahu is gone. He's, he's been prime minister for 12 years. And um, I want to go, I want to walk you through the timeline of events to how this unfolded, right? So there's a good article here uh, on, on Reuters with some bullet points that we'll look at, okay? So you can see here this timeline. March 23rd, they had their, uh, their fourth inconclusive elections in two years, right? So no party won a majority, Okay, although Netanyahu's right wing uh, Likud, that's the name of his party, Likud, emerges the biggest one. Okay, and uh, Lapid, we'll get to him, his centrist party, right, came second. And now, April 5th, you know Netanyahu, he has a corruption uh, uh, scandal going on. So that's, that's um, you know, that's, that's still ongoing. They're very serious allegations, right? And I don't think they're just allegations. Um, but moving on. They're, they're uh, the president of this occupation, right? He gave Netanyahu 28 days to form a government. It didn't happen. It didn't work, right? Then he went to, La to, to Lapid, okay? And told him to try and form a government on May 5th. And he gave him also a, a time limit. Now, in between, we had this, uh, this uh, onslaught, this attack against Gaza, as you, uh, as you remember, uh, on May 10th. And this lasted 11 days. And, you know, it's a lot of people... In the occupation, in the Israeli occupation, and out and outside, also suspected that you know Netanyahu is doing this uh, as a ruse. It's a trick in order to buy time and and uh, distract everyone from not just his corruption scandal, of course, but also from his inability to form a coalition government, right? And so, kind of just basically buying himself more time in office, because throughout his whole tenure, that's what he's done, right? He's he's been very uh, uh, a good chess player, shall we say? Yes. Uh, as uh, but he's he's cunning, <laughs> uh, and and in, in any case, the, people thought that that was the case. I mean, I I don't know. I guess there there could be some truth to it. It's not like you know, it, it's it's normal in politics to have people who exploit a crisis for political gain. Yes, and it's not. I mean, my, my point here is that the Israelis are inflicting uh, terrorism and occupation and suffering on the Palestinians every day. It wasn't just some 11-day thing for Netanyahu. No, this is constant, right? It's for going on for 73 years. So that's my point, whether he did that or not, right? But let's continue with the timeline. So um, af after the ceasefire happened on, on May 21st between Hamas, who, who are in power in Gaza, and, uh, and the, uh, this was brokered by Egypt, right? So they brokered the ceasefire. After that, they had talks again um, about forming a coalition. And before the deadline, you remember it's a 28-day deadline, uh, it says here, June 2nd, about 30 minutes before his midnight deadline, Lapid informs R Rivlin, who's the president, he has managed to strike deals with his political allies to form a coalition government. And that as part of this deal, Bennett, yes, he's the new, the new shaitan we'll get to afterwards, Bennett will serve as prime minister for about two years, after which Lapid will take over. Yes, that's actually a thing. Right? So, so in their occupation... Uh, Netanyahu also did this with Benny Gantz, who is the defense minister, right? So they had a deal that, okay, well, you know, after uh, a certain period of time, you can be prime minister, right? It's like they're just sharing the... <laughs> it, it's absurd, right? It, it really is absurd. But uh, uh, in any case, this is, right, it's not unheard of. It's, it's uh, the same thing you had before. So basically, Bennett will be prime minister for two years, and um, then Lapid will take over, okay? And... It's kind of funny because this coalition that they formed, okay, oh, just just a second, I'll get, I'll, I'll break it down for you in a second. But in any case, they they had um, from I think June seventh they signed the deal, right? So uh, they they formed the coalition and um, and it was uh, 
brought in by June 14th, right? So this is just a few days ago, and um, now he's the prime minister, right? So there he is, Naftali Bennett. Now, I want to I want to break this coalition down for you because it's kind of amusing uh, the way this this came about. So basically, uh, th this coalition uh, has Arabs in it. OK, it's it's a uh, here it is. This is a, a pretty good breakdown of what's going on. OK, so as we said, uh, Netanyahu, his party is the Likud. OK. Um, but uh, the new prime minister, Bennett, he comes from a party called uh, Yamina. And uh, they're even more right-wing than, than Likud, which is kind of funny, right? But actually, the word Yamina, uh, in Arabic, Yamin is right as well. And the same thing in Hebrew, it means right. So not only are they ultra far right, but even the name of their party is just simply the right. Um, and that's his party, right? And I think they've got seven seats only. But still, nonetheless, Bennett is in power now because of this coalition deal, right? And it spans so many parties that they even included Arabs in there, if you can believe it. Yes. And I just think it's so funny because they always tell you, like, oh, look, Israel, is, <laughs> it's a democracy. It's the, by the way, it's the only democracy in the Middle East. That's their slogan, right? But apparently it took 73 years for, for an, a single Arab to serve in the government. That's kind of funny, right? Wow. So uh, just going back to the composition of this, right? You, you have... Um, Several parties here, and I, and I, I very much appreciate these, um, these graphics that have been put up here by uh, eight, Al, Al Jazeera and BBC, various outlets have made them. But you can see it's a coalition of eight parties, right? And what's funny is that these parties all got together, even though they're completely, you know, they're, they're on different sides of the spectrum. And even, you know, I think I'm, I'm pretty sure they did not want to include Arabs in there, but they were, they were forced to. They, they did all this just for the sake of getting rid of Netanyahu. They're united by their hatred for him. I think that's pretty funny. I mean, you have to laugh at that, right? Um, so they formed this coalition going from the far right to, you know, uh, the liberal left, the, the so-called liberal left, and even including Arabs, just because they all hate Netanyahu. It's kind of funny, right? So you can see here when I'm talking about the Arabs, they have four seats. So uh, Mansour Abbas, this, right? So you can see here where the cursor is, the United Arab List. I'm going to try and zoom in even more for you, perhaps, so you can see it better. Um, who else do we have in there? We also have um, Ahmad Tibi, I think, and Ayman Ode. I think they're, they're, they're all in. Uh, those are the other uh, uh, two seats. So, so just continuing, just continuing. Um, Netanyahu, he, he was very upset, as you can imagine. He tried to block this coalition. <laughs> he really tried to block this coalition, um, and it didn't work. So he got very upset, and he called the, uh, you know, he, he said that it was election fraud, basically. So it's kind of funny, because he, he basically sounded like Trump, right? He just came out, and he said, oh, this is election fraud, and it's undemocratic, and they're stealing the... the um, the premiership from me. So I want to play you a little bit of uh, his, <laughs> his rant, right? אנחנו עדים לעונאת הבחירות הגדולה ביותר בתולדות המדינה, לדעתי בתולדות הדמוקרטיות. אני מחפש דבר מקביל, יש לי כמה חוקרים, לא מצאו הונאה כזאת. אין דבר כזה. ולכן אנשים מרגישים בצדק, מרומים, הרבה מאוד, והם מגיבים לזה. אי אפשר לסתום להם תפיות. ואסור, אסור לחסום חשבונות פייסבוק וטוויטר רק כדי להשתיק את הביקורת נגד ממשלת ההונאה הזאת. עכשיו אני רוצה שתדעו, זה לא דבר תיאורטי. פייסבוק חסמה פוסטים של אנשי ימין בגלל שהם פרסמו את כתובתו של חבר הכנסת ניר אורבך לטובת הפגנות ימין. אבל פייסבוק באותו זמן השאירה את הפוסטים של ארגוני השמאל שפרסמו בדיוק את אותה כתובת לטובת הפגנות השמאל. זה מקרה מדעי, פשוט מדעי, קליני, שמוכיח ניסיון לסתום לימין את הפה. Right, so you get the idea, yes. And uh, this, is, uh, this is kind of funny. So when he, when he came to sit um, in, uh, in parliament, right, in, in their Israeli, their so-called parliament, uh, he sat in the seat of the, uh, the prime minister, right, because... Uh, that's where he usually sits, and then someone comes over and, and tells him to move. <laughs> so I'll play that clip for you.
There he is, by the way. You can see Netanyahu is just saying hi to Bennett. That's Bennett. So he's the, the incoming, the new um, leader of the occupation. So, Rabotai, Bevakashal Sadranim, and I'm a Keshlo Shivet Havrak Neset. <laughs> so they re they relocated him, right? They relocated him. And um Here here were some uh, some other scenes also in the parliament. You had some of his loyalists that were that were whining about this, right? They were yelling <laughs> אדוני ראש הממשלה, בנימין נתניהו, גברתי, נשיאת... חבר הכנסת סמוטרץ', נא להוציא אותו מהמליאה מיד. נא להוציא אותו מהמליאה מיד. את חברת הכנסת וולדיגר, נא להוציא... נא להוציא את חברת הכנסת גולן מהמליאה. נא להוציא אותה מהמליאה. תודה רבה. תודה רבה. I mean, I find this hilarious, honestly. If they, if this coalition could not stand Netanyahu for, uh, for 12 years, what do they think the Palestinians feel like after 73 years of, of this crap? Um, but, you know, let's get, I want you to get to know the new uh, so-called Israeli prime minister a little bit, right? So we've seen how Netanyahu's departed now, right? So let's, let's take a look with a lot of blood on his hands, evidently, like any Israeli politician. But I want to show you now a little bit about... Bennett, right? Our new friend. So <laughs> let's take a look, right? Here's an article from the BBC. Naftali Bennett, the rise of Israel's new prime minister. This is from uh, June 15th. So they say Naftali Bennett, Israel's new prime minister, is a former commando and self-made tech billionaire who bills himself as further to the right than the man he replaces, Benjamin Netanyahu. And so Bennett has long held ambitions to be prime minister, but his new role is remarkable given his right-wing nationalist party, Yamina, won only a handful of seats in the last general election. Despite his faction coming joint fifth with seven MPs, Bennett was propelled into the position of kingmaker with his support vital if either of the two rival blocs competing for power were able to form a viable governing coalition. Right? Now, he was offered the premiership as a shared role by both Mr. Netanyahu who has been in power since 2009, and the centrist opposition leader, Lapid. In the end, Mr. Bennett sided with Mr. Lapid, despite the wide ideological differences, right? So, so this is very interesting, right? Netanyahu, as I said, he tried to form a coalition so he could stay in power. And this, he didn't succeed. And in his attempts to do that, he offered this guy the premiership, right? So probably in the, in the form of, I'll stay prime minister for a year or another two years, and then you can have it, right? It didn't work. It didn't work, even though they're both right-wingers. Um, which, again, is kind of... Okay, <laughs> I, think, I think that's, that's kind of hilarious, right? As if there's any difference uh, between the two. But nonetheless, um, it didn't work. And so, instead... Because you have to understand, the mar it's razor-thin, the margin. Huh? You have a majority of 120 seats in the Knesset. The Knesset is their, their so-called parliament. And this coalition got 50... What was it? Uh, 61 to 59? I mean, something ridiculous, right? So it's razor thin, absolutely razor thin. And when it comes to Bennett, I want to show you some of his previous uh, uh, endeavors, right? So Bennett was uh, Netanyahu's chief of staff from 2006 to 2008 until the pair fell out. Uh, he left Mr. Netanyahu's Likud party and joined the right-wing national religious Jewish Home Party, entering parliament after leading it to success in the 2013 election. He went on to serve as a minister in every coalition government until 2019, when his newly formed, uh, when his newly formed New Right Alliance failed to win any seats. And just 11 months later, Mr. Bennett reversed the loss, returning to parliament as head of Yamina. Again, this is the right-wing party that he's uh, leading now, right? So... Often labeled an ultra-nationalist, he's described himself as more right-wing than Netanyahu, 
Bennett is outspoken in his advocacy of Israel as the Jewish nation state and Jewish historical and religious claims to the West Bank, East Jerusalem, and Syrian Golan Heights, territory occupied illegally by Israel since the 1967 Middle East War. He has long championed the rights of Jewish settlement in the West Bank, and he was once the head of the Yesha Council. So the, the, the Yesha Council, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it, it's essentially, it's, it's a, a, you know, it's a, an association for uh, Jewish settlers who are, of course, in Palestine illegally, right? So in, in the West Bank and so forth. And he was the head of that, right? So, so it's, it's, it's not just that he's your, re your regular uh, colonizer. No, no, no. He's, he's a leader of one of these groups, you know, that one of my, this council, which is its only purpose is based on advocacy for, for the settlements, right? And, um, and he has said, uh, although he has said Israel has no claims on Gaza, right, from which Israel withdrew troops and settlers in 2005, uh, more than 600,000 Jews live in about 140 settlements in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, which are completely illegal, and uh, there are multiple UN resolutions against that, right? So I want to show you some of his other, his, his other feats. So let's look at some of his quotes, right? Let's look at some of his quotes over here. Okay. So he said before, quote, um, remember this is Bennett, right? So he said before, I would not give another centimeter to the Arabs, right? Uh, he said, there is not going to be a Palestinian state within the tiny land of Israel. It's just not going to happen. And on annexation, he said, I don't accept it's illegal under international law. For a moment, I thought that he said he doesn't accept the annexations. No, no, no. He's saying he doesn't give a crap about international law. He, he's totally fine with the annexations, right? And um, he's also said that I will do everything in my power forever to fight against a Palestinian state. And asked about the army targeting children, he replied, they are not children. They are terrorists. And most famously, he's reported to have said, I've killed lots of Arabs in my life, and there's no problem with that. Wow. That's what he said. I've killed lots of Arabs in my life, and there's no problem with that. I mean, wow. Here's an interview he did with Conflict Zone. He said, we are surrounded by the craziest people in the world. And of course, he, he repeats many of the same things that, that you know, we've, uh, we've just looked at. You, so I think you get the idea, right? He's, he's a regular Zionist. <laughs> I mean, for... for it, there's no difference between him and Netanyahu at all, really. Uh, they do the exact same things. You know, when we say that he, he's totally fine with the annexations, yeah, who did those annexations? Who wanted to annex uh, another 30% of the West Bank just last year in, uh, on July 1st of 2020? That's Netanyahu, right? Who, who's been bombing uh, Gaza in uh, 2009 where Operation Cast led, then 2014 um, Protective Edge, and then again, uh, just uh, last month, this 11-day attack. Who did that? That's under Netanyahu, right? It's under every Israeli prime minister that they're butchering Arabs, that they're occupying Palestinians. You really think that just because this guy claims to be more to the right than Netanyahu, that he's not a right-winger? They're all, they're all fucking racists. They're all right-wingers. They're all colonizers. Right? Again, I, I don't care what, what you, you identify as in this entity. You're a colonizer. Do you understand? You're colonizing other people's land. All of these, these uh, uh, people in Israel, they come from other countries. So many of them have dual nationalities. They have dual nationalities. Palestinians don't even have one nationality. Do you know how difficult it is for a Palestinian to travel anywhere? If they can even get to the airport, if they're even allowed out. Gaza is under siege. You can't leave. So I don't, I don't think anyone, I haven't heard a single person <laughs> say that this guy's going to be better than Netanyahu. But I, I just want to get the point across here. They're all colonizer bastards. Do you understand this? They all support the same policies. So, I mean, yes, while the quotes that we just read out from him are, are extremely, you know, abysmal and abhorrent, it's, they're all like that. They all say this, at least, you know, if, if not publicly, definitely privately, but they even say it in public. This is their policy. This is their policy. It's to make sure there's no Palestinian state. All of them, right? Any, anyone who says they're for a two-state solution is a liar. Where is it? They, they're not interested in, in a two-state solution. The Israelis don't want a two-state solution. Why would they be? They have the entire military and political backing of the West. They have Palestinians living under their, their, their thumb, under occupation. 
They're in a position of extraordinary power. They get away with murder, literally with murder. They just get away with it. Why would they? Why would they want a two-state solution? Why would they give Arabs another centimeter, as he says? So, you know, Bennett might be a bit more out, uh, you know, a bit more uh, uh, direct and brutal in his honesty, but they are all the same. They're all colonizers. They are all murdering Palestinians, occupying Palestine, occupying Syria. This guy even thinks the Syrian Golan Heights are, are his. But then again, so does Netanyahu. Netanyahu went and, and, and uh, had Trump go and recognize them, right, as, as uh, Israeli. Which, again, is extraordinary, given, given that when you had these UN Security Council resolutions passed, there are so many, I keep forgetting the numbers, right? 242 is the first one. But um, when you had that passed, even the U.S. was for it. It, it passed unanimously. There are so many UN Security Council resolutions saying, you, you meaning Israel, you have to get out of the West Bank, of East Jerusalem, of the Sinai Peninsula, they left that one, and the Syrian Golan Heights. And then declaring their Jerusalem law or basic law null and void. Declaring their annexations null and void. But it's not specific to Netanyahu. They're all bastards, right? So this is, this is just some, some infighting, right? It's just a political rivalry. But uh, I, I, I do think it's funny that, that he's finally gotten the boot. I mean, again, don't get me wrong. I don't like to laugh at other people's misery, but we are talking about Netanyahu. <laughs> I mean, th th this guy is, is the devil. Is the devil. You know, I, I'd, love to, I'd love to see the mainstream media demonize him, and, 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 and correctly so, for what, all the blood he has on his hands. The, the apartheid, the, the same way that they've demonized Arabs and, and Africans and, and uh, leaders in Latin America, like Maduro, like uh, Al-Assad, like Saddam, like Gaddafi. Have you ever seen the media pull an onslaught like that against an Israeli prime minister? Never! Not in your wildest fucking dreams, mate. Never. It's not happening. And yet they would deserve it more than anyone, perhaps, right? With the exception of uh, the Americans and British. So, they're all going to continue this, right? Th this is what is going to continue, make no mistake. You see how they, ha they treat Palestinians? I mean, th this honestly is a drop in the water compared to the bombs, right? This, what you see here, this fence, the border wall, that that's mild. That's mild compared to the butchering, compared to the bombs. It's mild. And even that is, is horrendous and inhumane. God. So... You know, I, I, uh, I just want to make sure uh, uh, you understand also that this guy, Bennett, he got into power. And what does he do? Um, he approves this flag march, right? So this is uh, uh, the Israelis, you know, they celebrate uh, something called Jerusalem Day. You know what Jerusalem Day is? No, it's nothing holy. It's quite, quite, quite the opposite. It's quite unholy. They, they celebrate their capture of Jerusalem. And, and consequently, the annexation, they illegally annexed it in 1980, right? So they captured it in 67, they annexed it in 1980, and that's what Jerusalem Day means for them. They just celebrate their occupation. And so, you know, they, they, this, as you know, what happened in Jerusalem with Sheikh Jarrah, uh, what happened at Damascus Gate, and also these pogroms, these mobs, these Zionist mobs yelling death to Arabs, the, these are the, the marches we're talking about, these ultra-nationalists. Although, again, I find this funny when you say ultra-nationalists in the case of Israel. They're all fucking ultra-nationalists. Their whole country is built on the concept of killing Palestinians and taking their homes. <laughs> that, that's it. So, he approved this march, right? So, so this is my point. The, the, the first goddamn thing that Bennett does when he gets into office two days ago, he approves this march, right? Because they have rerouted it, I think, twice. And now they let it finally go ahead. And we'll get to that in a bit, right? And then another thing, he's bombing Gaza. They're bombing Gaza tonight, right? And they bombed Gaza two nights ago. So basically on the first night that he's prime minister, he just goes and bombs Gaza. The first time since the ceasefire on May 21st. So, so there's no difference between these people. They are fucking colonizer scum. They are oppressors, right? They are foreign invaders. They are architects of apartheid, of occupation, of colonization, of imperialism. That's what they are. They're all the same. So whether one of them speaks this way or that way makes no difference. The policies are exactly the same. They believe in the same thing. They believe in, in stealing Palestinian land, stealing Syrian land, stealing land from every country around them, right? They believe in maintaining this occupation. They're all the same. Make no mistake. 
So, over here, this is from The Guardian. The, the title reads, New Israeli government is just as bad as the last as Palestinian prime minister, right? So, quote, we do not see this new government as any less bad than the previous one, and we condemn the announcements of the new prime minister, Naftali Bennett, in support of Israeli settlements. Mohammed Shteya said, referring to hundreds of thousands of Jewish Israelis who have taken land in the occupied West Bank. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but I, I hope so. So, the, the Palestinian prime minister goes on to say that the new government has no future if it does not take into consideration the future of the Palestinian people and their legitimate rights. Right? And um, down here, of course, several world leaders publicly congratulated Bennett. No! Oh, you're kidding. The Western world went to grovel at the new Israeli prime minister's feet? Oh, who could have seen that coming? Oh, no. The real question is who sucked his dick first, right? So <laughs> several world leaders publicly congratulated Bennett. And despite the fact that the new leader's government has explicitly pledged not to make efforts to end the Israeli occupation... Some figures abroad highlighted the need to pursue peace. Yeah, well, that's, that's great, right? Th what, what does that mean? They, it's just hot air. They say that every year. They say that every, every, every time there's a new prime minister because nothing is going to happen. It's just talk. Justin Trudeau, the Canadian prime minister, right? He said Ottawa remains steadfast in its commitment to a two-state solution. Yeah, great. Where is it? With Israelis and Palestinians living in peace, security, and dignity without fear and with their human rights respected. Okay, well, wh where is it? I mean, uh, beyond this statement, wh what are their efforts? Huh? And Joe Biden had a phone call with Bennett, and he conveyed that his administration intends to work closely with the Israeli government on efforts to advance peace, security, and prosperity for Israelis and Palestinians. No, no, l l listen, man. Prosperity and having a fucking state are not the same thing. So these are nice words. It's decoration, right? Oh, we, we want peace and, and security and, and prosperity and euphoria and unicorns. Where is the state, asshole? Where is the Palestinian state? It's been 73 fucking years of occupation. Where is the state? Not your statements. Not your hot air. Where is the state? There will be no peace and security and st prosperity and all these nice things to say unless Palestinians have a state. Because they're living under occupation. Syrians are living under occupation. The Golan Heights are under occupation since 1967. What is this bullshit? Hot air. Hot air. And of course, the European Council President, Charles Michel, said he was looking forward to strengthening the EU-Israel partnership for... <laughs> Just the same diarrhea they copied and pasted it. Dominic Raab, he, he visited Netanyahu, right, after they, they bombed the crap out of Gaza. Right. I look forward to continued cooperation on security, trade, and climate change. Again, nothing about a Palestinian state. Zero. Zero. Zero, zero, zero. Nothing. Because they're never going to do anything. I mean, what would you expect from Britain? Britain created this monstrosity anyway, in the first place. So, I mean, it's... it's uh, I don't even know what to say, man. I don't even know what to say. I just, I want to shed light on what this means. It means jack shit. It means nothing. Because Palestinians, nothing is changing for them. Do you understand this? This is what I want to underline. And they all support the same policies. There's no change. You get rid, you get rid of one devil and another takes his place. That's it. That's it.